Please give us the granularity here on a day where everyone's kind of, you know, going, hey, another bank failure, everything's great, the economy's fine, the Fed can keep hiking. <laughs> Well, uh, we're certainly operating in a, in a tough macro, uh, and nobody's nobody's impervious, uh, impervious to a challenging macro environment. If your customers are impacted, uh, you're going to be impacted. So we did see uh, customer purchases. We did see deals going to close at a protracted rate, especially in the last two weeks of a quarter, which uh, was uh, accented by uh, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, and among the other uh difficult economic uh, news. Yeah. So, uh, you know, how long do you think is, is this just a little bit of a lull? I mean, everything you're describing makes a lot of sense and sounds a little bit discomforting if you're a CEO where you say, OK, we had finance and we had tech and these are two areas which are kind of taking a pause right now. Yeah, well, uh, the great news is Temple has a very diverse customer base. We, are, we have customers in uh, over 180 countries around the world uh, in just about every major industry. So we do have uh, exposure to banking and, and tech, uh, but that's only a few of, of a very diverse customer base. Outside of the uh, financial crisis, where you know there's concerns, there's concerns about interest rates, there's concerns about recessions, there's uh, all sorts of concerns, and and I think CFOs and company uh, companies are just a little, little bit more cautious in their spend. We had Bill Smead on; he's a value investor earlier this hour, and he said. You know, it took nine years, basically, after the, the dot-com bubble for tech to get an evaluation when he was comfortable with it, and that it made sense to him that cloud and software services and everything would be weak right now. Do you think this kind of winter could last that long? Uh, I don't know if the winter is going to last that long. We actually saw very strong demand. We saw actually deals moving through the sales process and through the funnel faster than ever. Leads turning into tech evals, tech wins turning... Uh, into into procurements, just a little bit of a slowdown at the end of that process. And so, uh, you know, we're assuming that these types of buying behaviors are going to continue. Uh, and that's where we chose to bring down our uh, uh, billings guidance for the remainder of the year. Now, we did deliver record uh, uh, cash flow, and we had a massive beat on earnings and, and raised expectations for uh, operating income this year. What are some of the positives you think people are missing? I mean, is it just that we're going to have to let this period of macro concern pass? Well, I think the macro uh, is one thing that's just going to have to have to pass. But I think if you look at the broader opportunity, if you think strategically, our society is digitizing at an incredible rate. You're seeing more computers, more systems, more complexity. And the threats are not slowing down. In fact, uh, they're going to be accelerated by all of the AI that we're seeing that you were actually talking about uh, just recently. It's yeah. going to intensify the threat environment. And so the cyber market and Tenable in particular, we have incredible opportunity in front of us. Challenge is it's a crowded space. It's been overfunded by uh, venture capital. There are probably 10,000 cyber companies out there, a vast majority of them making less than $10 million in, in, in sales. And so there's, there's going to be a shakeout. There's going to be a consolidation in this market. And you'll have to look to industry leaders. You have to look to companies uh, at scale with tens of thousands of customers with nearly a billion dollars or more in in, uh, in revenue and, and see them shift from market-leading products to yeah. real platform providers.